One of the problem with AI generated human photos is that sometimes they do faces very bad. I know we all know that they do fingers very bad, but it's also fact that faces are not very well formed. That's why a lot of times we give negative prompts like deformed. Um, so these are these are certain ways we try to improve the faces that are generated by AI generated photos like stable diffusion and DALI. So what I'm going to show you in this video is that how you can take a picture that is AI generated, especially in stable diffusion or DALI that has got a terrible face or even if you think the face is not human realistic and how you can restore the face. For example, let's see that we have got an image like this. This is directly from lexica.ai, sorry, lexica.art where we have got a lot of images from stable diffusion and you can see this image. This image, you can see that the face is quite bad. And that is, that is a clue, uh, that is a trial somebody leaves to say this is an AI generated image. So what I'm going to show you is you can take this image and then you can put it inside a system called Code Former, and then you can get this beautiful face. Now whether this face exactly matches with this, that's a different topic altogether. But because this is an AI generated picture, you can see that this face quite well matches with the setting and then this is not a deformed face and it's a fully proper face. In fact, for that matter, you can see the pupil, like the eyes inside, they are very symmetrical. The eyeballs are the same color, which is another problem that stable diffusion has. So that's what this tutorial is about. This tutorial is going to teach you how you can use code former to restore face, which is whether it is from old photos or AI generated face. And we are going to use the hugging face spaces that the team has put together but instead of using the computation from hugging face team we are going to use it in our own google collab notebook and i'm going to take you through the google collab notebook the first thing is this google collab notebook will be in the youtube description so you can directly click and then start uh, yourself but if you are starting from scratch make sure that click runtime and change runtime and then you have got the gpu accelerator selected we need gpu accelerator just keep that in mind so let me stop my existing one so what, whenever you get a Google Collab Notebook, it's a good practice first to check what is the GPU that you have got. The way you can check is NVIDIA SMI will give you what is the memory of the compu computer that you have got. In this case, I've got a Tesla T4 machine and it is a 16 gig machine. So know this fact, it is quite important. A lot of systems will help you. You can optimize a lot of systems if you know this fact. The next thing is we have to clone the hugging face spaces, the code former space, the official code former space, this exact one, we are going to clone it inside our Google Collab session. Once you do that, next enter into the code former directory, the folder, next start installing all the requirements. Once you install all the requirements, next install the Gradio application, the Gradio Python library. The next thing is you need to run the app.py file, but before you do that, just make one final change to the code, click the folder icon to the left and open app.py and once you have app.py open, go to the last line and when you clone it, you will not see this line. You will see that demo.launch, add just this line equal that says share is equal to true, which is to create a Gradio shared link on you, inside your Google Collab. After you add it, Again, just to repeat, demo.launch is what you would ideally see when you clone it. Add an argument saying share is equal to true and then save it. Once you save it, you should see the star going away. That means you have ultimately saved the app.py file, which will also notify that saved successfully. Then run python app.py with a, with, with a bang icon, um, sorry, bang symbol that will help you run a shell command. So we are executing app.py file as a python application. Click run and that is going to download the required pre-trained models and also the sample images to run the hugging face spaces inside your Google Collab notebook. And once it runs successfully, it is going to give you a public URL like this. The moment you click the public URL, you are going to be greeted with this Gradio space, which uh, hugging face spaces or Gradio application where you can do few things. One, let us start with a very simple example that is available. So we have an example here. It's an old picture of, uh, I think probably uh, DiCaprio, I don't know. So this is an old picture and we are going to improve the face of this picture and then we are going to see the output. Let's see how it looks. I've clicked submit and it is going to create a new image for us. We are going to see the individual parameters as we look at this application in detail in a while. 
it took about 20 seconds for me on google collab on a tesla deformation and this is the high quality image of this face is fully restored with the background image restored and also you know the face has been like the entire picture has been upscale so you can see how beautiful sharp perfect it is you also get to download the high definition image which in this case is a 2.8 megabytes image so now instead of using the images that are given in the example let's use one of the images that we have got which is what i was showing you before at the start so i'm going to paste this image which is a fully face deformed image that i got from lexica.art so when i select this image now i have four parameters to select the first parameter is background enhance the second parameter is face unsam up sample the third parameter is rescaling factor and the fourth one is code former fidelity so now the most important of all is the code former fidelity which is zero for better quality one for better identity so this is a balance that you have to strike between what is how close you want it to the uploaded image and how close um, or how perfect you want the image to be for example i have found it to be less than 0.5 the image, the code former algorithm tries to keep the output image closer to the input image. The larger you go, the image quality would become better or the image would become totally new. So it's a balance that you have to strike. I have always found 0 0.3, 0 0.4 quite helpful for me. The next thing is the background enhance. If you want to touch upon the background, you can select background enhance. Most of the stable diffusion image, I'm quite happy with the background. So I don't want to do anything with the background. So I mostly keep it disabled. Second thing, I need to keep the face up sample. So that's another thing. And when you want to up sample the face, what is the rescaling re factor up to four? So I have always found two to be quite reasonable. So I'm going to select face up sample i've deselected background enhanced rescaling factor is 2 and my code former fidelity is 0.28 i'm going to submit this image now it takes about like if you have selected everything it takes about 20 seconds in this case it has give, it has it has not even taken 10 seconds and you can see that the deformed image has been fixed the pupil is quite good and everything looks really really amazing for us to strongly believe that this is not a ai generated image Sometimes it's also very important for you to not oversaturate it or, you know, make it too artificial or too good to believe that this is AI generated image. So while we are here, let us pick another image and then let us try it out. So this is another image where you can actually see that the face is quite good. The eyeballs are quite bad and you can very well easily say that this is uh, an AI generated image. So let's download this image. And after we download this image, let's try to use this image as an input for our code former face restoration so i've got this image and i've kept the same settings in this case background enhanced disabled because this is quite a portrait face sam face up sample selected and the rescaling factor is 2 and the code former fidelity is 0.28 i'm going to click submit and then let's wait for about 10 seconds or in this case probably 8 seconds and then see how the image output looks like so you can see that this has done a very good job um i wouldn't say like it looks so perfect like a human image but it looks it, it it has done a very good job in restoring the face and you have this final image the final image looks much better it is upscaled and uh, the eyeballs are quite proper like better than before and you can take any deformed image and then try to make it work and this is how you can improve the output quality of your stable diffusion or dali generated images using code former it, it's quite simple you can go to the code former repository that is linked here and then please give a star to them and then see how they are doing it all the technical details are available there and you can also see what other use cases you can use code former for but i have personally found it quite helpful if you have got ai generated image and if you want to restore the face whether the face is not good whether the face is deformed whether the eyeballs are not quite proper whether it, they are not symmetrical but you can restore them and upscale them especially if you've got faces using code former so thanks to the code former team to put out this entire paper and also the hugging face spaces that we have used in this video to restore our stable diffusion or dali ai generated faces using code former so this google collab notebook will be linked in the youtube description like i said the one change that you have to do other than running the entire code is go inside app.py and at the end of this code you have to add share is equal to true and that will let you run this entire google collab notebook without any issue and you'll be able to run the code former face restoration gradio application with which 
you can fix your ai generated faces i hope this was helpful to you in learning how to restore faces of ai generated images if you have got any question let me know in the comment section otherwise see you in the next video happy prompting